found it, Black Jack. Come on, now look, Watson, do we have to come in and get you? Come in and get me. Okay, man, let him have it. Uh, Dad. Huh? Going oh. out, David? Uh, yes, Mother. Oh, uh, Dad. Again, Luke Watson. David wants to speak to you, Edward. Have to come in and get you. Well, I hear him, oh, I hear him, I hear him. What is it, David? Well, Dad, I, I'd like to ask you... Well, that is, I, uh, I'd i like to talk to you about something. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, son. Well, what I've got to say might upset you a bit, but I'd like you to hear me out. Upset me? <laughs> what is it? Anything wrong? Well, no, no, not exactly. I... Dad, why don't you and Mr. Harrison call off your feud? Harrison? What's he got to do with you? Well, nothing, Dad, not a thing. But don't you think it would be nicer for everybody if you stopped fighting with him? Me stop fighting? Why, you talk as though I were to blame instead of that loud mouth nitwit. Did he chase? No, of course not, Dad. It's just that I thought that if... Yes, it was that young son of his. That's who it was. Look here, David, I'm not trying to choose your friends for you, but you know how I feel about that young Harrison. But you shouldn't, Dad. Bob's a fine fellow. Fine fellow? He's a hoodlum, just like his father. And another thing. What's my fight with Harrison got to do with you? Oh, nothing, I guess. I just thought it might be better all around if... Oh, well, maybe I shouldn't have even mentioned you it. You certainly shouldn't. If I had my way, I'd drive that fellow Harrison and his whole tribe out of this town. Yeah, yeah, well, good night, Dad. Good night, Mother. Did you take a fresh handkerchief, Davis? Yes, I have it in my inside pocket. And your keys? Yes, I have that, too. Oh, David, there's a button off your sleeve. Let me sew it on. Oh, no, you. never mind, Mother. But it's... it won't take a minute, dear. But no one will notice. You can do it tomorrow. Don't stay out too late. No, I won't. Everett. Eh? This is your last chance, Luke Watson. Oh, Are you coming on. out, or would we have to go in and get you? Come in and get me. Where's my paper? He Where's my paper? Nobody should touch that paper until I finish reading it. Does Luke Watson get to Deadwood Gulch in time to stop the squire from foreclosing the mortgage? I told you not to get yourself excited, Harrison. Every time you do, the effect of these shots on your hay fever is dissipated. But it's all right with me if you want to keep on paying me for the shots. It's more money in the bank, and your money as good as anybody else's. Oh, Dr. Killam, it's Killam. Well, I haven't even touched you yet. Don't be such a big baby. It's only a little pinprick. Pinprick? The marlin spot? Oh, oh, Dr. Killam, it's Killam. He's such a great, brave, strong man. Well, what do you expect me to do, enjoy him? Oh, oh, that's oh. right, that's right. Get excited again. A lot of good these shots are going to do him. Oh. Oh, good night, Mrs. Harrison. I'm sorry you have to be bothered this way. All right, good night. Oh, 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 oh. If you'd learn to keep your big mouth shut once in a while, maybe Everett Conway wouldn't outsmart you all the time. If you wouldn't get tight, it could be cured. Outsmart me? What? Henry. Oh, gotta keep calm. Gotta keep calm. Don't tell me you're the first one ready. Bob, getting late. Okay, sis, be down in a minute. What are you doing all dressed up? You're going out with that young Conway night, are you? Who, me, Father? Go, why don't you try minding your own business once in a while? Now listen, Mrs. H, I demand a little more respect around this house. I won't have you associating with that nincompoop next door. He's no better than his old man. She's going out with Robert Henry. Ready, sis? We're going out to a movie tonight. Probably won't be home until late. Oh, here. What stink? Bob. Are you wearing perfume? Oh, Pop, all the fellas wear cologne nowadays. This is prairie leather. Leather? Smells more like fertilizer. Bob, hadn't we better hurry? We'll be late. Oh, yeah, I guess we'd better Mom. get going. So long. Yeah, Bye, Mom. You kids get back early, you hear me? I never wore perfume when I was his age. That doesn't mean you didn't need it, Henry.
Ranger this time, Harrison. Caught you red-handed, didn't I? I can't let go. I can't let go. Turn it off. Turn off that current outbreak. Every bone in your body, Conway. Everett! Holy smoke! Henry! What is it, Mom? Oh, it's popping, Mr. Conway. Trying to dig up my roses, eh? If this thing electrocutes me, not that Conway. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> Henry, you'll wake up the whole neighborhood. I hope he does. I want the whole world to know this big lummox tried to sabotage my roses. Well, you window box hard of curse. The only reason you plant them here is because, you know, I'm allergic to roses. I planted roses long before you ever heard of an allergy. <laughs> Not that color. Don't, don't. <laughs> if I ever get my hands loose from this shovel, I'll fix you. I've never had so much fun in all my life. So, you never had so much fun in all your life, huh? Uh, no, no, Dad, Dad, don't do it! Pop, stop it! Please stop it! I'm coming, Pop, I'll help you. Oh, take it easy, will you, Mr. Conway? Stay where you are, you hoodlum. Get on your own side of the fence. Everett, it's not the children's fault. They're his brother. Enough. Can't we do something? Oh, let them alone, Lucille. It'll just end the way it always does. I want to warn you about my left, Harrison. It moves like a piston. <laughs> You shouldn't over here. What if Pop wakes up and catches us? Oh, I don't care. I couldn't sleep anyway after all that excitement tonight. I know. I couldn't sleep either. Gee, how are we going to tell Pop that we want to get married? He won't let you in the house. He won't even let me mention your name. Damn it. Ever since we can remember, our fathers have been feuding. And we wind up falling in love with each other. For all the girls in town, I have to pick you. Do, do you wish you hadn't, Davy? Oh, don't be silly, Pooh. I don't care what your father thinks of mine either. I love you and we're gonna be married. Oh, I hope we can. Before you go away. Don't worry, Pooh. Leave it to me. I'm gonna miss you terribly, Davy. Not half as much as I'm gonna miss you. But this is a great opportunity, Pooh. It's the chance of a lifetime for a young engineer. The government picked me out of a thousand applicants. Oh, but Alaska, it's so far away. I wish I could take you with me, Pooh. But it's only for six months. I'll be back before you know it. Oh, I understand. It's just that I love you so much. I know, darling. It won't be easy for me either. Hey. Pop. What's going on down there? No, I don't think I care for these. I never wear colored pajamas. Do you have something in white? Oh, sure thing, Mr. Lawrence. We got some beauties in just the other day. I'll show them to you. What have you got to tell me that's so important? You know Mr. Kirst doesn't like me to gab with friends during business hours. You want to get me fired? We've got something important to tell you, Bob. Uh, that's the large size, isn't it? Who and I are going to get married? Extra large. Extra large. Well, these are our best... Married? Did you say something? Hmm? Oh, uh, uh, excuse me. I, I, I've got... Did you say married? You want the whole town to know about it? We made up our minds this morning. You're the only one that knows about it. Well, I wish you hadn't told me. And I hope I'm not around when you tell your man and mine. Married? Holy smoke! I'm not gonna tell them. Not gonna tell... Well, not till later. Are you going to wait on me or not, young man? Oh, uh, uh, yes, sir. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Uh, I, I think you're right, these pajamas, sir, because, you see, they're getting married, and his father doesn't like my father's pajamas. Are you ill, young man, or do you always act this way? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I always act this way. Excuse me. What do you mean you're not going to tell them? We're going to elope. Elope? Do you know what you're saying? You can't do it. Why, it's impossible. Yes, we can, but you've got to help us. I've got to... We've got to go to the city hall now. See you later. Bye-bye. City Hall? Uh, we have... 
Hmm. Well, since when have you gone in for modeling pajamas? Oh, well, not long. I, I, I just... Uh, look, Mr. Kurtz, I've just gotten some bad news. Something terrible's going to happen. I'll be right back. Well, now, listen here. Now, oh, I thanks very much, Mr. Kurtz. I'll do the wait, same for you sometime. Here's your pajamas, Mr. Lawrence. Hey! Hey! What are you going in the city hall for? Do you realize what you're getting into? Relax, will you, Bob? I've got to get a copy of my birth registration to send to Washington. Oh, well, that's different. Look. Look, about this eloping. You don't want to do anything you regret. Let's think it over, huh? Well, we've already thought it over, Bob. Our minds are made up. And nobody's going to change them. Well, maybe you're incompatible. Lots of people are incompatible. Look, we're back to the store. We can talk about it some tomorrow, tomorrow, huh? We got our match license yesterday in Midvale. We're eloping tonight. Well, that's fine. Tonight? Hello, Mr. Wilson. I'd like to get a copy of my birth registration. I heard about your good luck. Congratulations, David. Thank you. Uh, when are you leaving? Oh, in a couple of weeks. Mighty fine thing. I wish I was young again. I'd go to Alaska myself. <laughs> I'll look up your registration right away. Fine. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. You'll never get away with it. Believe me, you won't even get through Judge Bingle's doorway before she'll have Pop on the phone. We're not going to have Judge Bingle marry us. We're going to Midvale. Midvale? Oh, you can't do it. It's impossible. How are you two going to get all the way to Midvale, get married, and come back without Pop and your old man finding out? Ah, that's where you come in. Better check on it thoroughly. And if it's true, the whole town will be. We must investigate to the last detail. But if it is true, they must be informed at once. Not a word of this to anyone till we know for sure. Tell the boy to come back some other time. David. Oh, yes, Mr. Wilson. You'll have to come back again uh, uh, some other time, uh, uh, at a later date. Well, there won't be any delay, will there, Mr. Wilson? They told me to get it as soon as possible. Uh, no, 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 no delay. That is, uh, 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 well, well, uh, we'll call you back, David. Mm, well, thank you, Mr. Wilson, but remember, I need it soon. Come on, we've got a lot of things to do. Hey, where are you going now? dragging me into this. I wish you hadn't even told me about it. Oh, my gosh, Bob. You'd think we were doing something terrible. We're only getting married. Only getting married? Okay, okay. Go ahead. Do anything you want, but count me out. Then you mean you won't help us? I couldn't have said it better myself. But don't you see, Bob? This is our last chance. Well, you'll be back in six months. Now he wants us to wait six months. I don't want you to wait. I just don't want to get involved in this. How do you know what'll happen in six months? Do you realize you may be keeping us apart for the rest of our lives? Do you want that on your conscience? My conscience? Well, why put the burden on me? Because you're deliberately trying to break us up. Me? Yes, you. Many a time we came through for you in a pinch. But if that's the way you feel about it, forget it. I guess I didn't mean anything to him when I took the blame for that anonymous letter to the newspaper accusing the mayor of collusion. And when Millie Walker phones the house, it's always, please, Carol, tell her I'm not home. I'll do anything for you, only please tell her I'm not here. Well, now, now don't take that attitude. And when he took old Hubert's taxi out to the football game. I hawked everything I owned to pay the repair bill. Now, wait a minute. You know I appreciated that. Sure. And when you let him have your father's tuxedo and he burned a hole in it, and you had to take the blame for it. Well, it's a time like this when you find out who your real friends are. Okay, okay. I know I'm sticking my neck out. What do you want me to do? Then you will help me. I knew you'd come through, Bob. Now, all you've got to do is get a car. Get a car? Mm -hmm. Where am I going to get a car? I know just the place. Come on. Say, here comes our pigeon now, Bob. Pigeon? 
You mean vulture. Oh, come on, you can swing it. Oh, why am I such a patsy? Hi. Hello, Millie. Hello, Dave. Hiya, tall, blonde, and repulsive. Nice to see you, Millie. Uh, Bob was just thinking about you. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I like my men thoughtful. Uh, he was just saying that he hasn't seen much of you lately. That's an understatement. You haven't exactly been knocking my door down, Bob Harrison. I've phoned you a dozen times this week and got a dozen different reasons why you couldn't answer. Well, I, uh, I was going to call you, uh, today, but, uh, well, uh, here I bump right into you. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, he was wondering if you happen to be busy tonight. Now that you mention it, I do happen to have a date. Oh, well, uh, far be it for me to ask you to break a date. Man. Oh, it's nothing very important. I was just going to a concert with Lester Matson. Well, sure, sure. Have a nice time. Uh, maybe we can make it again some. Oh, concerts are so uninteresting anyway. Concerts? Now, why don't you two uh, take in a movie or, or just talk or... Um, or um, or uh, uh, go for a drive. Oh, now, that's an idea. Go for a drive. I don't know why I throw myself at you like this. What time? Eight o'clock. Uh, eight o'clock. You know, Dad's still pretty burned up about the time he took me to the beer joint. So maybe you better meet me in front of the drugstore. That is, if it's all right with you. Oh, why, sure, sure. It's perfectly all right. Okay, then. Hey, quick, do a disappearing act. Here comes the painter. Okay. Well, how do you do, Mr. Walker? Hello, Mr. Walker. Hello, Father. Hello, David. <laughs> and Robert. Huh. That Harrison boy again. Father told you to stay away from him. He just happened to be passing by. Huh? Huh. Bye. 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 Hi, you Bob. Oh, hello, Judy. Now, why couldn't she have a car? Getting nervous, Davy. Nervous? What are you nervous about this? Nothing to be nervous about. I don't know. Just nervous. I got a funny feeling like I'm gonna whoops. How do you think I feel? What's going on with those two anyway? Going on? Uh, what do you mean? Why are you all so hep on going to Midvale? You know, there's something fishy about this whole trip. Fishy? Look, would I lie to you? If I thought you'd made a date with me again just because I've got a car. Oh, as if I'd do a thing like that. As if you wouldn't. You know, Millie, I couldn't go out with another girl tonight if I tried. Would you repeat that, please? I mean it, Millie. It just had to be you. I don't get it. Why the sudden change? No change. I've always felt the same way about you. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. You bet. Here we are. Pull up alongside of that house. Just as the... Bob! Hey, hey, wait a minute. Don't get any ideas. We're just along as observers. Oh. Say, you two are eloping. Yes, but don't tell anybody, Millie. It's going to be a secret. We want to get married before Davy goes to Alaska. Another girl of you tried, huh? Come on, we haven't any time to lose. Let's get this over with. Oh, Mr. Tweedle. Good evening. Good evening, Mrs. Conway. Uh, won't you come in? I'm certainly glad I found you home tonight, Mrs. Con... Oh... Good evening, Mr. Conway. Now, see here, Tweedle, if you're here about the election, I don't need anybody to tell me how to vote. I'll mark my ballot the way I want. I don't like this electioneering. I'm not here about That's the, the trouble with you fellows in city jobs. Somebody wants a favor and you can't be found. Along comes the election and you're right out on the doorstep. Oh, I tell you, the day will Everett, come. Everett, I think Mr. Tweedle wants to say something. Lucille, please, you keep out of this, will you? When it comes to politics, I know my way around. I've been all through this before. There are several things that I want to take up with the mayor. Mr. Conway, my visit here has nothing to do with politics. I don't like the way that... What? Mr. Tweedle, you look all worn out. Wouldn't you like to come in and sit down? Yes, I think I... better. Lucille, it's half past nine. I have something rather... rather startling to tell you. Well, don't say. 
Oh, put it there, put it there. Mm -hmm. I must ask you to prepare yourselves for a shock. In all my 30 years as head of the Bureau of Vital Statistics, morning David came to my department for a copy of his birth certificate. Yes, that's what you're there for. You, you don't have to tell me what I'm there for. I'm not trying to tell you anything. I made an astounding discovery. Staggering though it was, I had presence of mind enough to recheck with the hospital records before coming here. Hospital records? See here, Tweedle, the taxpayers are handing out plenty of money for any trouble we're putting you to. Everett, will you please let Mr. Tweedle talk? Well, who's stopping him? Mr. Conway. At the hospital, it is recorded that a son was born to the Harrison family and the Conway family on the same day. As if anyone could stop him talking. That's right, Mr. Tweedle. David and Robert have the same birthday. Upon further inquiry, I learned that on the day the two boys were born, Mr. Harrison and Mr. Conway had one of their uh, customary arguments. Arguments? It was a massacre. Four attendants saved his life when they pulled me off him. Uh, is this your signature, Mr. Conway? Where? Uh, it certainly is. Yes, it is. What about it? Well, Mr. Conway, this signature is on the receipt for the Harrison baby. What? In the excitement of the fight, the father signed for the wrong infant. Therefore, the hospital is not responsible for the switching of the children. I never switched a child in my life. Mr. Tweedle, are you trying to say that... Yes, Mrs. Conway, the baby that was brought to you was the Harrison baby. But, 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 but that's impossible. Tweedle, you're drunk. Mr. Conway, I have never touched a drop of hard liquor in all my life. I warned you to be prepared for a shock. According to these records, in black and white, David is not your son. Robert is. Tweedle, did you hear what, what I hear? Oh, oh my... Oh, look, 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 he's going to faint. Now, Everett. No, 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 I'm all right. I'll be all right. Look here, Tweedle, don't you think we ought to talk this over? Don't you think we'll think it out before we go any further? Sorry, Mr. Conway, there's nothing more to be thought out. But, but, but I'm on my way to inform the Harrisons, right? Good night, Mrs. Conway. Oh, oh. Everett! Well, don't stand there like that. Come on. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me that his kid is my... That's uh, with mine? Do you mean to say that that baboon's son could be in my house for 20 years without my knowing it? Mr. Conway, would you please stop shouting at me? I'm only doing my duty. Why don't you go back to the department where you belong and not make a lot of trouble for people? Why, that overgrown string bean of yours... Don't you throw vegetables at me. Please, please, quiet. And don't you order me around. Remember, you're just the servant of the people. <laughs> quiet! <laughs> now, what is it, Mr. Tweedle? This is completely out of my hands. It is a matter for the court to decide. Well, uh, let's get on with the ceremony now. The book, Annie. Where's the book? Shall I? Yes, thank you. February. Mm -hmm. And when are you born, young man? Uh, November. November. February and November. Aquarius and Scorpio. Oh, too bad. Too bad. All right, all right. Everything is all ready now. Well, I never knew it to fail. Scorpio and Aquarius. It won't last. Will you stop? Will you stop that stuff? The last couple we had came in here loving each other, and they went out hating each other. Now, let me see. The, the groom will stand right about well, here. I'm the bride. Oh, yes, yeah. Oh, yeah. How do you do? How do you do? I got a feeling this isn't going to help Pop's hay fever, Annie. Yeah, well, let's get started. I need a license. Where, Annie, where is the license, please? Where it is, Lemuel. Where it is, Lemuel. Here. This. Oh, yes. Yeah, thank you. Well, now, here we are. Oh, David Conway and Carol... Ha oh, wait a minute. I can't perform this ceremony. This license was taken out yesterday. Oh, yes, sir, in the Midvale City Hall. Yes, but, young man, don't you understand... <laughs> oh, excuse me. According to the laws of this state, you must wait three days, and then the license is published, and then comes the execution. But we wait... There'll be no buts about it. Come back Monday. There'll be no marriage tonight. There yeah, goes four dollars. You and your Scorpio. Now, Everett, are you sure that's where you were standing? Lucille, I am positive. Now, look, here's the baby. Here's the baby right here. Now, the infant was brought in through a door on the left there. Right down to here. Then this big moron moved over to the right, over to here. I moved over here. Will you please keep your big mouth shut for just one minute? How can we reenact the scene with you blabbing your head off? You perfect idiot. You don't know where you were standing. Don't tell me I don't know where I was standing. All right, where were you standing? 
I was over. I was. I think I was. Yes, you think. I tell you, Marion, the whole mix-up started when he grabbed the paper from the nurse. And the nurse was standing right up there. Look. Everett, stop blaming Henry. You were just as much at fault as he was. Now, just give us the facts. Somebody will listen to me. I can explain exactly what happened. Shut up, Henry. Now, who took the first baby? He did. Oh, good heavens. Now they don't know who took the first baby. Well, how could I have taken the first baby when he was next to the door and I was here on the left? That's the right, Henry. How can you expect him to remember what happened 20 years ago when he can't remember right now which is his right or which is his left? Oh, I give up. Hey. It's as far as we go. Oh, thanks, Millie. You've been swell. You won't tell anyone, will you, Millie? Not a soul. Oh, of course she won't. Millie's much too a girl to do anything like that. Listen, Egghead, don't try to soft soap me. The next time you're in a taxi, I'm charging union rate. Hey. Come in. I, uh, I think I'll go on home. You too. Come in here, all of you. Imagine bringing up a boy's your own and blood for 20 years and then finding out. Yes, yes, Miss Perkins. Two cans of applesauce, please. Well, all I can say, Lucille, is that I wouldn't want to bring a strange boy into my home who'd been raised by another family. You have a duty to the community as well as to yourself. And just as important, you are employees of Walker's Farm Implements Incorporated. <clears throat> it would be a shame after 25 years in the business to find yourselves without jobs. I expect you to handle this matter with the utmost discretion. Yes, Mr. Walker. Yes, sir. That's all. Oh, well, this is the most awful thing I ever heard of. Well, it's positively terrible. I'm still in a daze. I, I can't believe it. it. It's like a bad dream. It's worse. You can sleep off a bad dream. But I don't know where I stand. You don't know where you stand? Well, how about us? I don't know if I'm him or, or me. Oh, but if you don't know who you are, and he doesn't know who he is, then how do I know if I'm going to be your wife and his sister, or his wife and your sister? But he's not going to marry you. I am. But you don't realize the predicament you're in. All I know is I'm still David Conway, and you're Bob Harrison. And Mr. Tweedle's all wet. There happens to be a little matter of a marriage license. And suppose Mr. Tweedle isn't all wet. Oh, Davy, I'm worried. Oh, now, there's nothing to worry about, Pooh. Worrying won't help us. Oh, yeah. And you can stop boiling over, too. We won't get married until this whole thing is straightened out. Look, you know you're not going to get married, and I know it. But what if people find out about that marriage license? Oh, I hadn't thought of that. We'd be in an awful pickle. Hey, what about Millie? She knows. Millie! Bob, you've got to keep her quiet. Tell her anything. Tell her you're in love with her, but don't let her talk. Tell her I'm in love with her? Oh, what have I done to deserve a face? First thing in the morning, before they file a marriage license. Do you want to wake everybody up? And get us into trouble? Well, of course your marriage license is filed. But we decided not to get married yet. Oh, that's tough. 
I suppose you want your two bucks back. Oh, no, no, it's, it's not that. Now, look, young fellow, you can take all the time you want to make up your mind. But in the meantime, that marriage license stays on record. Oh, don't look so glum, Pooh. We don't know anything for sure yet. Mr. Tweedle said it was a matter for the courts to decide. Maybe we're worrying about nothing. Yes, you and I will go steady now, seeing as how we have so much in common. I must bring this matter to light and do all my power to have it rectified. In all my career as town clerk of Chester Hill, I have never deviated from nor shirked any obligations to my fellow citizens who have entrusted me with this great responsibility by electing me to this honorable office. The elections are two months away, Tweedle. It's a march to the Cape. Cape? Oh, yes. Your Honor, there is no testimony other than appears in these written records which bear the signatures of the two fathers. I cannot imagine a more serious predicament that could complicate the lives of these two boys. However, we must not allow our emotions to influence our judgment. This is a matter that influences not only friendship. And therefore, Your Honor, it is my feeling that the boys should be returned to their rightful parents. Nobody's interested in how you feel, Tweedle. No, nobody cares how you feel, Tweedle. You've got enough trouble as it is. I'd like to punch you right in the nose. You can't talk to me like that. Tweedle, if you're out of order once again, I'll cite you for contempt of court. Everett, huh? you're making a spectacle of yourself. Well, I don't care. I don't from somebody else's. That's exactly how I feel about Anybody it. Anybody with that much intelligence taking one look at me and then at, uh, at what's his name here could see that David is my son. Now you're talking. Even a two-year-old child could recognize good Conway blood when he sees it. No Harrison was ever mistaken for a Conway. That's exactly the way I feel. What are you trying to say, Conway? I am telling you, I wouldn't have that addle-brained offspring of yours for my boy. Oh, you wouldn't, no, have. No. no. Order! One oh. more crack like that and I'll tear your ears off. Order! Order! Another outburst like that and I'll throw you both in jail. Oh, you let me go, let me in. I've got to speak to you at once. Your Honor, Your Honor, I have something important to say. What is the meaning of this? Oh, you've got to listen to me. I know something that'll solve this whole mix-up. Who are you? I'm Irma Reeves. I'm the nurse who attended the birth of the Harrison baby. That's right. That's Nurse Reeves. How do you do, Mrs. Harrison? Well, speak up. Tell me, what have you got to say? Your Honor, when the Harrison baby was born, he had a peculiar red birthmark. Well, I'd forgotten all about it. Birthmark? Are you sure of that? I'm positive. And if you look at the birth certificate, you'll find notations in my handwriting. Oh. So that's what these uh, hieroglyphics are. Now tell me, where is this birthmark? If Your Honor will step into your chambers with the boys, I'll show you. There will be an immediate physical examination. Conway and Robert Harrison will join me in my chambers at once. Well, I never in my life heard of anything taking. This is so birthmark. Say by the bell. That I've been waiting for. Are you sure you've noticed the mark on Bob? What do we do if he doesn't have it? Birthmark or no birthmark, nobody's going to tell me. Oh, a well, lot you've got to say about it. Well, we'll see if we can get out of here and get home just as soon as they find the birthmark on that Harrison brat. Oh, but what if they find it on our David? What are you talking about? All Harrisons are marked at birth, marked down. What are you so nervous about? Nervous? I'm not nervous. Who's nervous? I can't believe it. Well, seeing is believing. They both have birthmarks. What did I tell you? I both of them. You never said a word about this to me. Everybody argued with me. How could you help it now? But I Don't argue. Oh, Come on. 
According to the law of this state, the acknowledged signature on the birth certificate of a child is legal evidence of parentage. The testimony offered in this case by the town clerk has not been refuted. Therefore, this court finds that the boy, heretofore known as David Conway, will now be known as Robert Harrison, and vice versa. And each boy will be returned to his rightful parent without delay. <laughs> I wouldn't worry too much, Lucy. Well, I... I guess I've got everything. Put that black tie of mine that you like so much in the bag, uh, uh, David. Thanks, Dad. David, I want you to know that no matter what, I'll always feel that you're my boy. You'll come and see us often, won't you, David? It'll be easier for us that way. <laughs> Lucy, stop it. He's only going next door. No reason for any of us to be upset. Well, so long, folks. It's awful funny leaving you this way. I... Of course it is, Robert. But you're not really leaving us. We'll always feel the same toward you. That's the way I feel, too, Mom. <laughs> Goodbye, Bob. Goodbye, sis. Well, I guess I'd better get going. So long, Pop. Look, Bob. I know I shoot my mouth off too much. I've tried to be a good father, haven't I? You've been swell, Pop. Well, if you ever want anything or need anything or... If that Conway ever gets out of line with you, you just let me know. Sure. Hello, David. Hello. More inside. Thank you. Lamb chops? You know I don't like lamb chops, Mary. For a change. Besides, David likes lamb chops. Oh. 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 Uh, well, what I mean is I don't like lamb chops too often. Oh. I don't either. Too much of anything is... Well, it's too much. <laughs> well, I guess lamb chops are all right. It's meat anyway. The one thing I can't stand is turnips. Oh, I, I don't care for them either. Though. Look, Davy, just what you like. Turnips. Oh, what? Uh, your coat, Henry. Hmm? Your coat. My coat? I'm not going any place. Uh, I think Mr. Harrison's right. It's too hot for a coat tonight. Lamb chops, Davy. Oh, thank you, Carol. May I help you, Mrs. Harrison? Oh, thank you. David, you might as well get used to calling me mother. I know it'll be difficult at first, but you'll get used to it. Yes, mother. Would you care for some? Uh, Dad? 
Mm. Thanks, son. Oh, well, that's right, you don't. Isn't that the doorbell? No, it's the telephone, Robert. It's probably Mildred Walker again. What shall I tell her this time? Same thing, if you don't mind. Certainly not. I have it. Everett! Everett! I hear you, I hear you. Why don't you show Robert how you build your models? It'll give you boys a chance to get acquainted. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, of course, yes. Well, why don't you stand over here, David? Uh, son? Uh, Robert? I, uh... I've always wondered how you made those things. Mm -hmm. Well, there's not very much mystery about it. It just requires a steady hand and lots and lots of patience. You see, I've been working on this model for seven months. It's almost finished now. Robert, it is Mildred. She's very insistent this time. Oh, uh, uh, would you mind telling her that I'm still out anyway, that, that I've gone someplace? Why, of course. Just a few more touches, and this will be finished. You see the bowsprit? You see the bowsprit in there? That has to come up. It has to be on a certain angle. It has to be right. Robert, I have a message for you from Mildred. She said, although your telephone number is different, your technique hasn't changed a bit. Oh, she said that, did she? And she's going to keep ringing until she does get you. Is that so? Well, the next time she calls you, let me talk to her. I'll find out what's important enough to keep a telephone ringing all night long. Oh, is there anything I can get for you, Mr. Car uh, Dad? Who? Uh, I want my little tweezers. I don't know where they are. They should be right here on this table. There they are, over there on the little table. Oh, yes, I want the smallest pair. They're down at this end of the table, oh. over there. Put them down here. That's where they should have been all the... There she is. Okay, there she is. What are you thinking about, Daisy? Hmm? What are you thinking? Oh, nothing, I, I guess. This is an unusual situation, isn't it? The more I think about it, the more unusual it gets. What do you mean by that, Daisy? Well, I, I mean it's kind of, well, uh, uncomfortable. I know. I guess we're both upset because of the way things turned out. Oh, how can you talk like that? It's a good thing we found out you're my sister. 
and turnips. Enough to make anybody sick. Make yourself useful, Henry. Cover David with that blanket. Just exactly what is bothering you, David. Where does it seem to be? Well, I can't tell. I, I'm hot all over. and uh, It's a strange feeling. I... A strange feeling? <laughs> how, how do you mean? <laughs> I don't know. I, I never felt like this before. Oh, I feel terrible. <laughs> Lamb chops. Oh, stop jawing and go and phone the doctor. Well, don't bother. I'll phone him, Pop. I mean, Mr. Harrison. Don't you, Mr. Harrison, me. Just call him Uncle Henry. Okay, Uncle Henry. Uncle Henry. It's nothing serious, Mrs. Harrison. Just a case of measles. Measles? Couldn't he have the measles in Conway's house? He can't have them here. Well, he's got them here. Uh, he'll be all right in a couple of days. In the meantime, keep everyone away from him tonight. And just to play safe, I'm going to put on a quarantine. Quarantine? You can't put a quarantine on this house. Come right back in here. But we didn't do anything wrong, Bob. We didn't, huh? Don't forget, you took out a marriage license. That makes it attempt to commit a crime. Keep reading. Keep reading. Every imprisonment not to exceed 15 years in the state penitentiary. 15 years? Holy smoke. I tried to tell it to you last night, but you had to get the measles. I used to be a Conway. The girl, she turns out to be my sister. On top of that, I get the measles, and now you tell me I'm going to the state penitentiary for 15 years. Well, maybe they'll make it easy on us since it's our first offense. Oh, sure, the most they'll give us is 10 years. I'm an accomplice, I aided and abetted the act. Oh, 10 years in jail, added to the 10 years, this has already taken off my life, and I'll come out an old man. Oh, now, now, take it easy, Bob. We're, we're all in this thing together. There must be some... Decide to get married and make me a hardened criminal. Well, what can we do? Can we do anything, Davy? Oh, sure, we can give ourselves up and take the rack. Will you shut up a minute? We're not in jail yet. Yeah, but the day is still young. Yeah, All right, your so... voice is down. We're not supposed to be up here. Maybe Judge Bingle could help us. Judge Bingle? Oh, that's all we need. Holy smoke, I forgot. Tomorrow they publish it in the newspaper. What? Yeah. Oh, that does it. That'll bust this whole thing wide open. Carol hit it right on the head. Bob, you've got to go and see Judge Bingo right away. I've got to go. Oh, no. No, you don't. We'll wait till you get over the measles. Then you can do but it. But that'll be too late. Well, I'm not sticking my neck out again. I'm in this thing deep enough already. Oh, please, Bob. Please do but it. Now, now, you've got to listen to reason, Bob. I mean, after all, our whole futures are at stake. Our whole I'll lives. I'll go with you. I'll go with you, Bob. Uh, look, and tell her the truth. Tell her everything. Tell her we didn't know we were breaking the law. Say you will, Bob. I can just see Judge Bingle's face when she hears about this. I get cases of arson, burglary, wife beating, horse stealing, grand larceny. Why couldn't your family think up something simple, like an axe murder? Pop can't stand the sight of blood. Oh, please, Judge Bingle, you've got to help us. 
Do you realize how serious this might appear to be? Well, you bet we do, Judge Bingo. Davy will lose his chance to go to Alaska. Well, I suppose we can't blame you. Just because your fool-headed father's had a fight 20 years ago. Oh, no, Judge Bingo. <laughs> we didn't mean to do anything wrong. Don't cry, Carol. We didn't know we were breaking the law. Oh, here, here, here. <laughs> we just wanted to get married. <laughs> there, there, now, 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 don't cry. Everything's going to be all right. You mean we won't have to go to jail? Now, of course you won't have to go to jail, Carol. You haven't done anything wrong. But there's one thing I want to impress upon you. Do not speak of this to a living soul. Not a living soul. Understand? And uh, where did you take off this license? Midvale. Midvale. <laughs> it would be Midvale. Well, I can't do anything about it someday. But I'll take care of that license so that nobody will ever hear of it again. I'll have that license canceled and destroyed. And I don't want you to worry anymore. Oh, gosh, you're wonderful. Oh, gee, you're swell. You can find you. Bring up baseball, kid. Quarantine. I left my fishing hat on the dresser up there. Throw it down to me, will you? Here, Deborah. Thank you, darling. My, it's a beautiful day for fishing today, Lucille. Just a perfect day. You know, I think the fish are just going to leap at the bait at this time of the season. My, I feel sorry for anybody that can't get out on a day like this. Sorry for those who can't be out on a day like this. Mr. Harrison. Who are you? What are you busting my plants for? Wacka wacka woo what? Huh? Wacka wacka woo what? Oh! Wacka wacka woo what? Brother Moosehead. Brother Moosehead. Solemn confidential oath. Solemn confidential oath. I'm Justice of the Peace Jones, 32nd man for Midvale Lodge. 32nd? Studying for 33rd. Proceed, brother. Article 18 of the Sacred Charter. No storm or strife or act of man shall stop a moosehead from rendering aid to a brother moosehead. Wacka wacka woo wack. Harrison, you're in great trouble. With the moosehead? No, it's got nothing to do with the lodge. It's about your son and daughter. Oh, I came over just as soon as I read about the trial. I wouldn't do it except for a brother moosehead. Mr. Harrison? Your son and daughter have taken out a married... Married? My kids? Who are they going to marry? Shh. That's just it. The license reads to each other. To... What? Jones, you can't talk that way yeah. about my yeah. family. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I come... Please, please, Mr. Harrison. I know what I'm talking about. They tried to get me to perform the ceremony. They tried to get you a... A truth, man! Henry, <laughs> who are you? They tried to get married. Now, don't get excited. They tried to get married. David and Carol. I'm peace of the Jones Justice Bill. They tried to get me to perform the ceremony. Do you know what you're saying? Sure, I know what I'm saying. I saw it with my own eyes. I saw it with my own eyes, didn't I? Wait till I get my hands on them. Oh, it's impossible. I don't believe it. It'll be an awful fuss when it's in tomorrow's paper. Tomorrow's paper? Sure. Wait a minute. Vail City Hall today, is there? No, no, not on Sunday. Well, it'll be a simple matter to get into the files. You follow me? No, I don't. Nobody knows about the marriage license but you. So if I get to pour out of the files, nobody will know about it, including you. You get me? Oh, wait a minute, Henry. If I understand you right, Brother Moosehead. Now, Henry, don't go up half cock. What are you going to do? Do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going with Jones to Midvale and take care of things in my own way. No. This is one time you're not going to tell me what to do. Oh. Proceed, brother. You're not going to take me any... Goodbye, Mrs. Moosehead. It's 
so all fixed, Dave. We just saw Judge Bingo. She was wonderful, Dave. And she's going to take care of it? First thing in the morning and nobody will know a thing about it. Oh, swell. Boy, what a relief. I was just beginning to see my youth wasted on a rock pile. <laughs> I bet she hit the ceiling when you told her. Oh, she was pretty tough to handle, but you know me. <laughs> oh, you should have seen him. He was so scared he could hardly talk. Say, listen, you don't know what I was going through waiting up here alone. Ah, oh, but now it's all over. Nothing to worry about. We know all about you two. Oh, this is terrible. How could you do such a thing? Well, you've scandalized us. Quiet, quiet. What is this about you two? Answer me. I don't want any silly shallying. Speak up, David. That's you. What have you got to say about this? Well, now, there's nothing to get excited about. Nothing to get excited about? How can you say there's nothing to get excited about? Did you hear that, Lucy? Silence. I said we'll never live this down, never. But it's all straightened out. We got our marriage license before we knew we were brother and sister. So Judge Bingle is canceling it. Oh, is she? Oh, Judge Bingle is canceling the marriage license. Uh, she's going to keep it a secret. She's going to keep it a secret? Oh. Yeah. A secret? With that big lummox breaking into a city hall on a quiet Sunday afternoon? Henry, we've got to stop him. We've got to get to Midvale before he ruins it. Oh, ah. Of course. Come on. Now. You come along with me, young lady. You're going to tell them exactly what you told me. Uh, a fine howdy do. Well, Mr. Conway, I have now got to get to Midvale. Just stop Henry. He's going to steal the marriage license. Oh, are we in trouble again? How's going to come up to work? What's the matter? Have they all gone crazy? I got that. Never seen such goings. Midvale City Hall, Harrison. Hey, hey, wait, wait for me. Wait. Now look, Harrison. I lived up to the moose head oath by tipping you off about the kids. But I won't take part in anything like this. If you want to get through with it, it's your own responsibility. I sure appreciate what you've done, Jones. I won't forget it. I may as well warn you, the watchman's a little deep, but he's got a big gun. Jones, you make me feel proud to be a brother moose. You've lived up to our motto, brothers under the ant. I better not be seen around here. I suppose I can't talk you out of this, so good luck, brother moosehead. Thanks again, Jones. Ack-a-wack-a-woo-wack. Ack-a-wack-a-woo-wack. any help from this hip boot Isaac Walton? Are you blundering baboon? You never handled anything right in all your life? Oh, oh, but don't, don't tell me. Harrison, come with me. Roger, you're not washing him. Oh, I can't afford it. This. I'm going to finish, finish your first story. Stop it. This. Yeah. <laughs> They're the ones who tried to switch the kids at Chester Hill. I hear the shots around the city hall. They are hurting. They were trying to blow up the building. Conway, stop it, Harrison. Conway. All of you have been such a stupid idiot. Stop it. Who's an idiot? Stop it. I am stupid idiot. This is one time. These are going to save you, Conway. Come and get it. Remember Walker Star. Do you move every one of you? This unprecedented disregard for law and order must be dealt with at once. The citizens of Midvale can rest assured that this office will exert every effort in the prosecution of these men. Bill, I promise to cut through all red tape. Power Ranger! 
Excuse me, gentlemen, I'll have a statement for you later. I pulled up the fire iron, you see, and I see them varmints, I could see them just as plain, so I pulled back my triggers, just like that. Then I aimed like this here, and I took dead aim on Hey! <laughs> That's the way I done it. Oh. It is unanimously agreed that Henry Harrison be dishonorably dishandled and expelled from the herd. When the defendants Walker, Harrison, and Conway appear in this court, they will receive a fair and equitable trial. Fine kettle of fish, Everett. Work our brains to the bone, bringing up our children, and what do they do? Make convicts out of us. I know, Henry, but we just got to make the best of it. If we open our mouths in that courtroom, we'll disgrace those children. So we just have to take everything that's coming our way. Yeah, but we'll stick together, Everett, for the good of our children and our wives. <sighs> oh, shameful that we should have been fighting together the past 25 years. Well, it takes a time like this to open our eyes. <laughs> Opened your eyes before, this wouldn't have happened. Shut up, you. Don't forget what I told you. Your kid's in this, too. She was tricked into it. She had nothing to do with it. No court in the country. Yeah, well, you just say one word about that marriage license in court, and I'll bust your jaw for good. And if he's not man enough to do it, I'll do it myself. Yeah. I mean, I'll help you do it, Henry. Oh, well, Everett, of course, I knew that's what you meant. Hey, pipe down. Here comes your lawyer. We have nothing to say. We don't want any lawyer. Don't you think we might? No. no. Oh. Well, you got a lawyer anyway. Not that I'm particularly overjoyed in defending you, because, frankly, I think you're guilty of sin. However, the court has appointed me public defender, and it's my duty to aid you to the best of my ability. But between you and me, I wouldn't be here if the judge weren't my brother-in-law. I had to help him out because no other lawyer in town would take the case. And he wanted to get it off his docket. However, because it is my duty, I'll do what I can. And hope for the best. But off the record, I think they're going to throw the keys away on you. Now, is there anything you'd like to say? No. no. All right. I'll see you in court at 2 o'clock. Nice day, Joe. Outside. Fine. Well, I suppose you're anxious to know about the patient. It wasn't as serious as I thought, and the quarantine wasn't really necessary. Why, well, it's swell, Dr. Henry. Thanks, Doctor. Dave, it's worse than we thought. They haven't got a chance. The whole town's against them, and they won't tell the truth because they don't want to incriminate us. But couldn't a good lawyer help them? They don't want a lawyer. They won't talk. And the guy the court appointed as their lawyer didn't even want to take the case. Look, and it didn't help any when Pop punched the district attorney in the nose. Well, it isn't as if they committed murder or something. They just broke into a building. Well, try and convince anybody of that when they won't tell why they did it. Everyone thinks they were trying to blow up the city hall or set fire to it or something crazy. And the whole town's calling them a public menace. Public menace? I'm going to Midvale and tell the whole story. It was all my doing. I talked Carol into eloping and dragged you into it. You did nothing of the kind, Davy. I wanted to get married. Oh, I'm more at fault than either of you. My eyes were open when it happened. You two were in love. Now, you stay out of it. There's no use of the all getting wound up. And then, oh, you're not going without me. I walked up to Midvale and see the strange house to our marriage license, and suddenly I get involved. Oh, I know you did, but I don't want you to get involved in New Orleans. So ask for our account. I know there is no one. the point. If I go Hey! Come on! Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, 
In front of you are the three hoodlums from Chester Hill who broke into our beautiful city hall. They tried to make fools of us here in Midvale by refusing to give an explanation of their dastardly act. Now, the defense attorney contends that this is a very unusual case. Take a look at those men. What's unusual about them? Why, the jails are full of men of their kind. Are you going to allow them to walk the streets, jeopardizing life, liberty, and property? Or are you, as citizens of our community, going to protect our community and put them safely away where they belong in the state penitentiary? That concludes the opening argument of the prosecution, Your Honor. The defense will proceed. Good speech, Sam. Thanks, Oscar. Bessie's expecting you up to supper tonight. I'll be there. Some trial. Gentlemen, we've got to talk. This is our last chance. We must say something. I thought we went all through that before. Nobody's going to do any talking. Friends and neighbors of the jury, today I find myself in a very embarrassing position. His honor has appointed me to represent these three defendants. Since I first heard the details of this case, I plan to plead for my clients on the grounds of insanity. Insanity? However, they have refused to talk to me at any time. And a lawyer cannot communicate with his clients by mental telepathy, nor do I happen to possess a crystal ball. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you, who but the victim of dementia praecox wouldn't talk to their attorney at a time like this when their very liberty is at stake? Why, any court in the country would declare these men mentally unbalanced and completely unable to premeditate a criminal act, let alone carry it out. But under the circumstances, all I can do is throw them on your mercy. Stop it. Stop it. I'm not crazy. I'll talk. Nothing will happen to you. I'll punch you in the mouth. Then you'll never be able to say a word. Be quiet. They wouldn't let me talk. They wouldn't let me. They broke into the courthouse to destroy your marriage license. Right, you I was trying to stop them. Marriage license? Who's marriage license? Nick Way. Nick Way. We're coming to step aside. Excuse us. Come away. Do you realize the seriousness of the charge you've just made? Do you know what you're saying? I'm positive. I have proof. Mildred, come here. Oh, me, Father? Yes, you. Uh, Stop everything. Judge Bingo, how dare you break into my court? That's them. They're the ones I didn't speak to. You, Judge Stray, a terrible injustice is being done. I demand that she be ordered out of court. How would you like to try it? You've got our fathers all wrong. They're only trying to protect us. We can straighten out this whole thing. Judge Bingle, this procedure is entirely out of order. I demand an explanation. Of course it's Harry Shrank. These men are not putting up any defense in order to protect their children. But Mr. Walker here just told us that... Mr. Walker, fool on Mr. Walker. Illegal. Since when is marriage... That's why I'm here. This is Dick, and this is Robert Harrison. And if you'll step into your chambers, I'll prove it. There'll be an immediate five-minute recess. But I object, Your Honor. Objection overruled. Come on, boys. Oh, this is the most amazing thing. Oh, what did I tell you? What do you know? You're absolutely right, Judge Bingle. I'm always right, Harry. Harry, 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 Harry. Hey, what's going on here? <laughs> and do something I've been waiting for. You're fired, both of you. Well, that suits me perfectly. Yeah, I don't have to look at your sour puss again. Henry! Yes, yes what? Now, we really know our son. What are you Everett. talking about? What's Everett, on? David is our son, not Robert. How do you know? Only Robert has the birthmark. Well, what about the birthmark on David? Yeah. It, it was, was the, the first, first measles spot. spot. The first measles spot? 
Well, then that's settled. Now I don't have to have your son in my family anymore. And nobody's happier about it than I am. Yeah. You settled that. Yes. Carol and I are going to be married. Oh, not really. You mean I'm going to be related to that underglass shipbuilder? Yeah, and you're going to be related to me, too. Uh-huh. Take it easy, will you, Millie? Yeah. This is a public place. Let me go. Be one go. big happy family. What's the meaning of this? Why do you always shout like that? You have the worst yeah, time I've ever heard. Mr. Harrison and Mr. Conway will please step forward. Now that the true facts have come to light, destroyed public property and committed assault and battery. In view of the extenuating circumstances, this court feels it owes Mr. Harrison and Mr. Conway a public apology. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> well, that's more like it, it's Conway. It's time somebody apologized to somebody around here. I didn't like the way they were treating us. Therefore, sentence will be reduced to 30 days for contempt of court. What did I tell you about 30 days? <laughs> more like.